There's a nice walkway along the riverbank. You pass by a bunch of buildings. We're going to paint murals on them. About 18 months preparation. I think it's really cool that the explosion of um, you know, contemporary street art around New Zealand and the world also draws attention to the fact that artists have been decorating walls from the beginning. And at least we forget, um, besides the hand signals between people, it was the first visual language. And um, it's my understanding that this played a major role in um, developing cognitive brain function and exercising basic perceptions about life. And that's a world-class conversation, never out of date. <laughs> the street art is one member that belongs to an extended family of designs and styles of murals. A fresco is a term that many travellers will be familiar with. Uh, for Riverside Murals Project, we've chosen eight categories of style. Decorative style, representational, motif, architectural, trompe l'oeil, which is French for a trick of the eye, when something looks real but it's not. Um, urban styles, sculptural relief, mosaic and tiled mural techniques. And people will recognise these styles in the murals that we've seen throughout Aotearoa, New Zealand. You can find out more details on these definitions and other stuff on our website. Each of the mural styles in the gallery experience connect to a river theme. We kicked off the first stage of our project with two paintings just before New Year's. Now one is a retro street style piece of urban art that uh, was designed by a 14 year old back in 1998. And the location for the work site is under a bridge. Easy to see the wall has had a check it passed. It's good to um, direct some positive energy into the site. Now some street artists are in short supply and I wasn't able to organise someone in time. So at the last minute, oh, I stepped in to do the job and was joined by some very keen volunteers from the community. And further along the riverbank, another mural had taken off. Uh, it was a representational style image um, that displays an historic scene, um, a bit like an old photo, you know, sepia colour photo. Uh, the location is called Miller's Acre. Um, it's a site with its own significance to the heritage of Nelson City. Local artist Rick Edmonds is producing the work with some help from his son Josh. One of our great modern painters, Colin McCann, lived in Nelson for a while. Uh, he suggested that this city was cruel to its art and, and its people. Well, since then, a lot of water's flowed under the bridge. Our 17 locals stepped up to volunteer and work on the art over three weeks. Not all at once, but it's usually a couple each day. Some were established artists and 
some are talented youngsters, and some folks uh, who have never done anything like this in their life before. It's a great experience for everyone. Just a small example so we could um, test what kind of lighting we need on the location. Uh, the painting's got fluoro paint in it. Yeah, that's this one. Right. Okay. Quite like that change. Look at that. <laughs> but then you know, after a while, UV can be a bit intense and a bit much, can it? So then it it's not on for long, though. That's no. what I like. But yeah, it's not going to freak people out. No. Right, cool, eh? Yeah. By setting up these wall sites, artists in the future have the opportunity to recreate and replace with new artwork. And that way the gallery stays alive and updated as part of this healthy, evolving city culture. You know, for the most part I think it's about art breaking down external and internal walls, uh, but making them friends, yeah. Oh yeah, turn it around, let buildings play a healthy role, uh, give them character and allow them to speak with people. I'm really excited over what comes next. <laughs>